I remember sitting in the early 80s with a bunch of promoters and, and was sitting with a bunch of promoters and managers and everybody's very upset because the first row was 18 or $20 and the last row was 18 or $20 and then they couldn't understand why people were buying tickets for $200 in the secondary market. And what the Golden Circle was saying, look, let's take X number of seats and those are like um, loge seats or grants or, uh, you know, orchestra seats and let's price them and scale them. Basically, a golden circle is the beginning of scaling the house. Um, as music evolved, as you went from $5 th um, concert tickets in the 70s, $4 concert tickets in the 70s, um, until the mid 80s, uh, because music is popular and the people's music, it was one price fits all. Um, and that didn't work because, you know, the fans who bought them, you know, said, well, wait a minute, I paid 18 and now I can get 750, um, you know, and so the artist started to look at it and say, maybe we should, then the business people, maybe we should get some of this money. And look, it's a business like anything else. You want to be fair to your fans. You know, if you go to a baseball game or, you know, or you go to a, a Laker game, the thing that Jerry Buss always did when I ran Ticketmaster, which was brilliant, was he had, yeah, he had the 500 and then they became $1,000 floor seats. But he also had 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 seats up in the top that were 750 and 950. He said, listen, you can go. We get you in, but, you know, and we'll get you a cheap price, but it's not going to be, it gets you in to share the experience. It's not the best seat. And music has come to that. And Broadway's come to that, too, because you saw $500 tickets for the producers, and now they have this, like, what they call Platinum Circle or whatever it's called. It's not surprising. And that's because you have a lot of people who don't want to stand online, who don't want to go through the hassle, and who want to get a ticket. And so this will never, it's never going to go away. When I left Ticketmaster in 98, you, you, the prices haven't gone to where they are now. Um, now, you know, the problem here is because one act can get $150, another act thinks he can get $150. And the problem is not that people don't want to go, they just don't want to go to see that act at $150. Maybe it's 60 or 50 they would. And the problem is not every act can draw that kind of money. So, you know, that's a different, different set of issues. Mm -hmm. But that was, the, that was the beginning. That was when people started to think of this, maybe it's a business. Maybe it's something we have to look at. It used to be you made the record and toured to support the record, right? Now, you know, I think what was Madonna's tour was $190 million in the Stones or somewhere in that level. Now you tour to make money because pri pricing caught up to value and the albums don't sell on the same level. D different, it's a different dynamic. And then came merchandise, and then came, you know, ancillary rights, and then came, you know, all of this, none of which has anything to do with ticketing. But it, it was really the, the, the progression that when I got in the business, people were, were genuinely concerned about being able to sell tickets orderly, have accurate accounting, um, not have duplicates, have a real straight up business. And as we s dealt with all those concerns, rapid speed of selling, you know, if you sell a show out quickly, you can roll into another show. And where you could do three or four or five stadium shows in a day, which was unheard of when I got in the business in the 80s, because you just couldn't physically get it done. And so the, the, the more the technology allowed you to do that, right, the more, you know, People started to take it for granted, you know, near the end they assumed we had no technology because it all looked effortless, you know, the, the line was all you did is print a ticket. But people don't understand the issue of throughput and they don't understand the issue of orderly distribution and making sure of, you know, the, the first big event we did was the White Sox, I, this is a true story, it was a White Sox game. And I remember I went to opening day of the White Sox in 1983 and I had a dream the night before that everybody was in the same seat and the system didn't work. So, you know, because I was never technical and I never learned the system. I understood the economics of the business, or I thought I did. And um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, you have to understand it was a lot of fun because you were changing rules and you were meeting needs. And from a manager's point of view and a band's point of view, if they could sell three shows instead of two, that was good for them.
right? And 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 if you could, if you could do it orderly and not have counterfeits and not have duplicates, you could really make a better business. And you know that it it ultimately helped everybody. 